morning. We're just paddling out from uh, the Patch Slipway at uh, Gubert, just up from Cardigan. Setting out halfway to low tide, uh, low tide's two o'clock. It is uh, roughly, oh wow, it's 11.20. I've spent the last hour just sort of lollygagging and drinking coffee and generally taking things pretty easy. In that time, the mud flats have really started to shine through here, so we're going to have to thread our way back through into the river channel, into the Tyvee. Then we're going to skirt up the coastline heading towards Cardigan Island. That bird just there is stood up, so this is getting quite shallow. I really did dilly dally. I started off by going to um, Poppet Sands just across on the other side, but I haven't got a trolley for this uh, boat and it was just too far to carry the boat through the. Um, too far to carry it through the. Um, through the sand dunes. And I've realised I'm going to have to get out and drag the boat. I can't believe it. But that's what I'm going to do, because I'll spend all bloody day here otherwise. Well, I got that wrong for sure. I zagged when I should have zigged. I'm puffing because I just had to drag the boat a few hundred metres across the mud flats. What an absolute loon. I was too busy racing out to really look at where the channels were shallowing. There's one deep channel left, this is it. The one that I aimed for straight off the beach was shallower, shallower than I anticipated. But now we're off. The sightseeing tours. The Bay Explorer. What a toy, eh? Now, where was I? Yes, I was exploring the inlet. Rather splendid. Oh, my goodness! Oh, my word. I've left the video running and I don't know how I'm going to edit all this, if I even do, but it's incredible, two cormorants flying out beside us. And the thing is I nearly didn't come today, 
I paddled for nine hours yesterday and when I woke up this morning I was pretty sore. Uh, I was just checking around the van really last night and I thought I found a, an oil leak. Um, so I was I think probably a bit worried about that last night. Uh, it turns out it's not. I think it was just grime under the engine had got hot so it just appeared shiny in, in the torchlight. Then Poppet Sands didn't work out like I thought. Uh, it was a nice bit of local advice, try Poppet Sands. Uh, good parking, easy access to the water, but without a trolley, that is a significant yomp through the dunes. And even though this is only a plastic boat, I just I can't stand dragging it. Um, so it took me a while to rework plans. I'm not terribly good at changing plans on the spot. I like to overthink things, have a plan, then fight the plan. But uh, it's worked out just perfectly. And you know what? If I don't get any further than this, it's been bloody worthwhile. We're not fully out the estuary yet. This is incredible. I've already had to stop and spend half an hour, I reckon, just paddling through the little coves and gullies, poking my head into the caves, watching quietly for seals. And almost every couple of meters, there's another big long gully and a beach with driftwood. We're coming round the point now, and there's our destination. Cardigan Island. I told you already I'm not good at thinking on my feet, but I'm trying to just recall the best of the tidal flow. We're on the last two hours of the dropping tide. I believe that the uh, channel between Cardigan Island and the, the mainland can pick up to a speed of uh, somewhere between two and perhaps four knots. Uh, we're on springs at the moment, but the bulk of the, the, the water has moved already. Just to play things safe though, I'm gonna follow the tail of the water through the channel. Then I'm gonna cut around the back of the island, so anti-clockwise. There's a lovely wind blowing us back into uh, the estuary. And then as the tide starts to slowly come in again. Hopefully I'll benefit a little from that flow as well, but to be honest, it's a flat, calm day. The wind is, is definitely on side at the moment. So I'm gonna play for the channel first, then anti-clockwise around Cardigan Island. I spotted this big, dark cove in the shadows up here. It wasn't on my plan, but there's a chance that it arches through into the next little cove, so let's go have an explore, shall we? Hard to keep the boat still for the camera when you're paddling properly. It's really hard to paddle properly when you're keeping the boat still for the camera. And I think I'm achieving both of those very poorly. But as my tagline says, Mediocre at best. And the rocks. So, I'm building on yesterday's uh, hypotheses. Uh, my money at the moment is sandstone layered with mudstones. Now, I do wonder uh, if some of the bandings are, are shale bandings. There was stuff letting go yesterday that I suppose could be mudstone banding. Uh, but there were little rock slides happening in as I was paddling along, which was quite entertaining. So Cardigan Island in front of us, I understand had a big uh, colony of puffin on it until there was a shipwreck. And I'm, from what I've read, the, uh, the, the brown rats that were on board the ship got onto the island and decimated the puffing colony. 
it's now a nature reserve and I understand they're trying to reintroduce the puffin. But there's also a herd of Soe sheep kept on the, uh, the island. And I bet I've said Soe wrong, S-O-A-Y. I don't think there's any real uh, discernible flow through this channel. So I'm gonna uh, cross, have a little look at this inlet here. It looks like almost a natural harbor. a lobster pot sat just in front of it. Well, there's a yellow one as well, perhaps they are a marker, but it looks to be a huge chasm, so that's where we're going. Uh, we've got a seal in the middle of the channel, he's just ducked down out of sight again. A good few hundred meters away from me, but I wonder if he'll get curious. Uh, there is a little flow coming through, so We've set up for an eddy, uh, for a ferry glide. caught me a bit by surprise because I was still trying to keep the camera straight and look out for that uh, seal but we're here ah oh, and nothing like as dramatic as I expected I thought we'd go right underneath the island I'm gonna to have to edit my last videos, cut the sound out, because I was talking all about mental maths and the best way to go through this channel and high tide and low tide. And what I forgot, of course, is that the tidal flow will have begun already. So I'm now having to paddle against the flow. Even though it's two hours to low tide, the flow is definitely coming through here. I'm just out of the flow itself as I cross an eddy you could see the flow over on my right hand side I was sure that I'd seen a seal out here but like yesterday I think they pop up and then they disappear definitely did misjudge where the flow was coming or when the flow was coming but I know why suddenly all that lollygagging and drinking coffee didn't seem quite so smart A young seal has just slipped into the water behind me, which is pretty cool. As long as it stays off my boat. So I'm going to err on the side of caution and head round. Now I had heard that there was rocks that you could drag out sort of chill out on this side and watch and I plan to spend a few hours doing that but 
A, the sun is merciless. And B, well, there weren't any. There might have been, I suppose, on a stand-up paddleboard. But I'm not feeling quite so lucky in the boat. Cormorants and guillemots on lookout. Or are they razor bills? I don't know, and you can't see. I suppose I could have a little shade for a moment. Definitely have some water and then think about what's next. Right, let's brave the channel then and uh, back across. Right, what we need now is some shade, some coves, and some exploration. I feel like I've already been into these. So that was Cardigan Island. Predictably rough on the outside is so often the way, the far side, picking up the swell. The waves are starting to break on the shallow shore, jutting out from it. Oh, you know what? That's got lunch written all over it.
think it came through at the right time. I'm not sure we'll make it now. See is that much shallower, it is incredibly clear. Pass him over at Kelp Forest. No way! We'll never make that. I like your thinking though. I hope to show you how clear it is. I've no idea what the footage will, will come out like, but it is unbecredible. Wow. A little cleft in the cliff, undercut into a cave. Literally every corner has something to explore. Snorkelist just over to the side of us. Looks like a seal, but he's got a snorkel. Let me set down there. Oh, how I laugh if I can't get through. I already know I can't get through. There's no flow. The gentle bob up and down. What a shame. Oh, my legs. Does this go? Oh, my goodness, it's beautiful. I don't know what to call my faith in, the camera or the GoPro. It is beautiful. My goodness. A cave. Oh, I'm glad I left these until the, the end. Round the island was a little out of my comfort zone, I'm not going to fib. It didn't scare me, but it certainly caused me to pay attention. Which is probably no bad thing. Where to go, where to go?
we're around the point and I think into our last few little rocky inlets really. Poppet Sands is huge. There is just no way I was going to carry my boat over that. A oh, delightful beach but no shade. I'll say it again in, in case I didn't say it before, but that's Poppet Sands just in front of us. It's just across the channel, but it feels like it's three boat lengths away. And it is hundreds of meters from the shore, so I'm glad I didn't drag the boat. I had no interest at all in dragging or carrying it that far. Oh, there's an oyster catcher here on the mussels under the green. There's so many, so many mussels here. There still seems to be quite a flow at the moment. We're at low tide now, pretty much exactly. So I guess there's quite a lot of river flow. Let's see if I can stay eddy to eddy then as we head back up. tell you quite how hot it is but it is headache inducing. I've drunk two litres and I've just replenished with another two in my, my bladder, in my drinks bladder, in my platypus. So I'm going to sneak into here into this little cove I think and make the most of uh, the shade and the cool. Let the water come in another hour or two. Paddle back into the van. Silly camera is running out of battery. Uh, I've run everything out of battery. Been filming off my phone, been filming off this. Uh, but just been lollygagging really, enjoying the shade in this huge sort of chasm. Um, just taking time, enjoying the shade, chilling out, waiting for the tide to rise back. Uh, just funny though, the things you see when you, you've got time on your hands and you just sort of sit and just, just watch the world go by. Little things like the braiding here, I don't know how well you can see. All the little fragments just moving slowly, drifting, being rolled and tumbled down. And then I was looking at the tide slowly rising. I think they've all gone now. But as it slowly covers these rocks over time, creeping in, and then we've got these things. I think crayfish, are they baby lobster? I'm not sure. You see just beneath the, the lens. And gone. Where else was I looking? And crabs, and you can see here how it's slowly creeping up millimeter by millimeter. The tide is flooded back. So, I'm going to take that tide, head back up now. Well, I've made it to four o'clock, uh, waiting on the beach two hours after low tide and it is now starting to fill the, the channel quite nicely. It seems to have mitigated the flow of the tide here as well. Paddling is, is pretty straightforward at the moment. I'm going to run out of battery so if so farewell but hopefully we'll get back to patch steps. Uh, the slipway and then off from there. Well, Pooh Bears, looks like I am too early. It's uh, half past four, but it's not yet floated up the channel I need, which is devastating, because it means I'm gonna have to drag from here to there. And I really don't want to. But I've sat in the sun for quite a long time, and uh, yeah, it's time for the van. Oh, there's the van, I can see it. So, final drag to finish the day.